So now it's time to import our quartz composition into VDMX. So save your quartz composition somewhere. And then let's open VDMX. And what we can do is we can drag in our saved quartz composition into the VDMX media bin. And then when we click on it, it should display the quartz composition, but it doesn't. We just see a black screen here. So what's going on? Well, it turns out that there are some bugs in Quartz Composer. Apple has kind of not been focusing so much on Quartz Composer. It's an older technology. Even though it's really awesome, uh, there are some bugs with certain parts of it. One of the bugs in particular is with this line patch. The built-in Quartz Composer line patch, even though it works within the Quartz Com Composer window here, the viewer here, it doesn't work when you import it into third-party software like VDMX. Fortunately, however, we can download a third-party patch that draws a line and it works both in Quartz Composer and in VDMX. So you'll want to download the Kiname GL tools. This includes a Kiname GL line patch that we will use to draw the line. I'll include a link to this in the video description. So after you install the Kiname GL line tools, you can search for GL line and use this GL line patch. And we're basically just going to replace our default line patch with the GL line patch. So we'll replace these position inputs. And we'll replace the enable. And we'll replace the start and end color. OK. So let's hide VDMX for now. Uh, great. So we're seeing the lines again. Uh, but what happened here? Uh, remember, we're passing in that number between 0 and 1 to the alpha. And it's supposed to change the opacity, but it's not. Well, I don't really actually quite understand this, but for whatever reason, RGB color doesn't work well with the GL line patch. So uh, you have to use the HSL color patch to get this done. I didn't actually research too much into why this happens, but uh, I discovered that if you uh, use the luminosity of the HSL color patch and then uh, map this color uh, there, and then we select the HSL color patch and turn down the saturation. Uh, we're back to this, this grayscale look. And uh, you can see that the lines look a little bit different. They kind of have a weird alias look. Uh, but when we import the, the composition into VDMX, you'll see that they look nice again. So don't, don't worry. OK, so let's save this. And let's uh, open up VDMX again. And we can uh, eject the composition and reload it by clicking on it. And now you see that we see these lines again. Now there's some sort of weird incompatibility between the line. Uh, there's an inconsistency between the line thickness uh, in the Quartz Composer viewer and VDMX. So the lines look really thick here, but they don't look so thick within VDMX. Well, that's easy to fix. We can just turn up the line thickness uh, within Quartz Composer, line width, let's turn it up to 5. And then we can save. And then we can eject the composition and reload it. And now we have these nice looking lines. It's looking pretty good. So now we come to the punchline of this whole tutorial, which is that when we load the Quartz Composition in, in the source panel, we can actually see the parameters that we've published from the quartz composition. We can use these sliders to control the parameters. So you can imagine you could map a MIDI controller and use a knob or a slider to manually adjust these parameters on the fly. Another trick that we can use is we can go to plugins and we can create an audio analysis plugin. Uh, we need to make sure to select the correct input device. This would be wherever your, your audio is coming in from. Uh, and then where did it go? It's here. So this is the audio analysis window. And if we play some sound, we can see uh, it reacting to the sound there. 
So now what we can do is we can right click on one of these sliders and use the audio analysis as a data source for the slider. So for example, we could choose filter one uh, and it's kind of going crazy now because the minimum is at negative one. So let's slide that minimum uh, to zero or a little bit above zero, how about? And then let's decrease this maximum a little bit. Uh, and now when we play sound, you can see that the slider is reacting to the sound. And the quartz composition is kind of dancing to the sound. That's cool. Uh, it's a little bit jumpy. You can see that the slider kind of jumps around a little bit with the peaks of the audio. And if we want it to be a little bit less jumpy, we can uh, select the slider. And then in the UI inspector, we click Edit Num Chain Effects. And uh, we can add a fall number effect. Uh, and what this does is after a peak uh, in the slider value, it won't immediately crash back down to zero. It'll kind of fall smoothly back down to zero. So if we play the audio and we increase this fall speed, uh, you can see that it kind of it's kind of like takes a little bit longer to fall back. You can also adjust the gain in the audio analysis plugin if we think the volume is too loud or too soft. Uh, and we can move the filter around to capture different frequencies of audio. So if we want to get that snare, for example, we can do something like this. Uh, and we can, it's really fun to play around with, uh, let's disable this data source and let's, let's play around with doing another slider. So for example, the number of points, let's use filter one. Let's uh, increase the minimum a little bit. Let's turn up the, uh, let's change where the filter is positioned. And so now it's kind of flashing along with the music. We can decrease the gain a little bit. Uh, let's do that same thing where we edit num effects chain and add a fall. So now it's kind of smoothly, more smoothly flashing along with the music. And then we, you know, you can imagine we have our, our uh, MIDI controller to modulate some of the other stuff manually. Uh, great, so let's uh, disable that data source. One last uh, modulation technique I wanted to show. Let's go to plugins. Let's go to the LFO. And it's always behind that window for some reason. So we have a low frequency oscillator here. And we can use this as a data source too. So uh, let's right click on, let's use, we'll use max distance and we'll say use data source LFO cosine. And now you can see that it's using one of these wave forms to modulate the max distance and you kind of get this in and out wave. And I, I, I think I'm gonna stop here. So I'm not gonna show you much more than this, but the LFO can be uh, locked to the clock time, and then you can uh, set a specific BPM for the clock. So this LFO could be locked into the, the beats per minute of a song that's playing, for example. Um, one last thing I wanted to show off actually was uh, you can apply effects to the layer that has quartz compositions on it, just like you could apply effects to clips. And this is where things can get really powerful. So. For example, we could uh, add a kaleidoscope. And all of a sudden we have this beautiful uh, kaleidoscope that is varying with this LFO, or you know, we could make it vary with the, uh, we could modulate it with the audio and it would be this kaleidoscope effect that uh, dances to the audio. And kaleidoscopes are very popular in VJing, but I think it gives you kind of a unique edge because you're, you're using generative graphics in your kaleidoscope rather than just a, a clip. That concludes the tutorial. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something and I encourage you to go play around with some of these techniques on your own. Thanks.